Did you know? Konami originally created Silent Hill as an attempt to conquer the American games market after the breakout success of Resident Evil, and planned to give the game a Hollywood-like atmosphere. The group developing the game, Team Silent, was comprised of staff who had underperformed during their previous projects, and were effectively outcasts from Konami's other development teams. Team Silent didn't know how to go about creating this Hollywood-like experience, and Konami gradually lost faith in the project. Eventually, Team Silent found themselves left to their own devices, and chose to ignore the Hollywood-like direction, and decided to make the game appeal to the emotion of the player instead. This change gave the team much more creative freedom, and led to them focusing their efforts on creating a fear of the unknown. The town of Silent Hill is based on a mixture of Western literature and films, as well as depictions of the average rural American town. This is why streets in the game are often named after popular horror authors, such as Michael Crichton, Dean Koontz, and Richard Bachman, which is one of the pseudonyms used by Stephen King. This may also be why many of Silent Hill's environments are modeled after places in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Kindergarten Cop, which also took place in a small, picturesque town. One of the younger members of the team, Takeyoshi Sato, struggled to be appropriately credited for his work on Silent Hill. He was initially restricted to performing basic tasks, like font design, but also found the time to create 3D demos and teaching older staff members the fundamentals of 3D modeling. Despite all this, he was told he was not going to get credited for all this extra work. Sato then decided to approach the company's higher-ups with a demo movie he made and threatened to withhold this technical knowledge from the other staff members if he wasn't assigned to a 3D modeling job. His bosses had no choice but to give in to this demand, and he was finally given the job of character modeling. Sato chose to design the characters of Silent Hill as he was modeling them in 3D, rather than basing them on pre-existing illustrations. Each character in Silent Hill has their own distinct characteristics, but the game's protagonist, Harry Mason, was purposely left very neutral looking so the players could easily identify him and project themselves into the game world. Sato has also been quoted as saying that creating the skull shapes for the faces of the American cast was rather difficult, as he had no Caucasian co-workers to use for reference. Although Sato was largely responsible for the game's full-motion video sequences and characters, the higher-ups at Konami still didn't want to fully credit his work, and planned to assign a visual supervisor to him. To prevent this, Sato volunteered to create the FMV sequences for the game entirely by himself. Over the course of two and a half years, he actually lived in the development team's office, as he had to render the sequences using the team's 150 computers after they had left work at the end of the day. Sato also said Silent Hill was intended to be a masterpiece rather than the initial sales-driven project Konami had planned, and that they opted for an engaging story that would persist over time, just like the literature the game paid homage to. Silent Hill struggled to pass censorship guidelines outside of Japan, and most of the trouble can be traced back to a single enemy, the Grey Child monsters were reworked twice so that the game could be approved for a North American release, and four times for the European release. The enemies were originally designed to resemble knife-wielding nude children. This was deemed too graphic, especially considering that the player could kill them. The North American version of the game features a faceless grey, somewhat larger version of the enemy with a modified head. In the European version of Silent Hill, however, the Grey Child monsters were completely replaced by the Mumbler monsters, which appear later in the North American version of the game. Despite the change to the EU version, the original Grey Child monster models can still be seen as transparent silhouettes when the player has reached the final hours of the game. The Silent Hill games are home to some of the most bizarre, fourth-wall-breaking moments in video game history. The original Silent Hill started it all with an alternate ending that fans have dubbed the UFO ending. A group of UFOs are seen in the sky and land shortly thereafter. Harry, who seems to be completely unfazed by the sight of extraterrestrials, asks them if they've seen his daughter. He is then shot and brought aboard their spacecraft, where they can be seen taking off into the sky. This alternate UFO ending can then be continued in the re-released versions of Silent Hill 2, where the game's protagonist, James Sunderland, is abducted by a group of aliens with the help of the first game's hero, Harry Mason. The UFO ending then continues into Silent Hill 3, where that game's heroine, Heather Mason, comes home to find her father sitting at the kitchen table having tea with an alien, as James Sunderland watches in the background. Taking a bit of a break from UFOs, there's another joke ending in Silent Hill 2 that has simply been called the dog ending, where James discovers that a cheery looking dog beyond a locked door has been controlling all of the events of the game with a large generic computer console. This is especially bizarre and out of place when you consider the rest of the game's ultra-serious tone. 
It doesn't stop there though, as the dog and UFO endings then combine to form an alternate ending in Silent Hill Origins, where a UFO comes down from the sky and opens, revealing the alien and the dog from Silent Hill 2 wearing a space helmet. This joke is then expanded upon even further in Silent Hill Shatter Memories, where an alien, the dog, and James Sunderland all make an appearance. Silent Hill Shatter Memories, which is a reimagining of the original game, has a mechanic where the player can use a phone to call or send texts in-game. If you enter Konami's official customer support phone number into this virtual phone, you'll be connected to an operator who acknowledges that you're calling from Silent Hill and that you're beyond even their help. Our caller ID says that you're calling from Silent Hill. I regret to inform you that you're beyond even our help. That's all for today, but don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming on YouTube, and follow Did You Know Gaming on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure to also check out DidYouKnowGaming.com. If you like this video, you can check out our other videos too. If you want to see the hypest gameplay on the interwebs, make sure to search for Two Best Friends Play into YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter.